Welcome back to DXB Today, where, of course, uh, we are uh, in the middle of what is a breast cancer awareness special for you. So, next guest is Anisha Obroy, the founder and the CEO of Secret Skin, who's been kind enough to join us on the sofa. Anisha, lovely to see you. Thank you for having me. Um, you've been listening on intently to what the doctor <laughs> was saying just a few moments ago. Uh, uh, nodding away, concurring, etc. The importance of awareness, how key is it? I think that the sooner we become attuned to the changes in our body and to what we're putting on our skin and inside it, the faster you'll get an understanding of how it affects your own health and that of the planet. Mm. So key is to catch it early. So Nisha, I just want to learn a bit about your breast cancer journey. So you got breast cancer in your 20s, yeah. which is incredibly young. Now, can you tell us a little bit about that and how it led to Secret Skin? Uh, well, the journey started 13 years ago in mm -hmm. that hospital mm -hmm. bed when, as a young girl, I refused to die. And I was frustrated at not being able to find beauty and personal care products that wouldn't impact my fertility mm -hmm. and disrupt my hormones. And that frustration made me think of creating a legacy that women one day, like myself, could trust. So I moved to the UAE four years ago. And uh, we didn't know COVID was about to happen and that people would start to get a lot more conscious about self-care. I saw a gap and then we built in the next three years the largest platform and the fastest growing beauty company in the region for sustainable beauty and personal care. It's got a wellness focus. The narrative is clean beauty, but in the end, what we're trying to do is to raise the awareness of women's health. You mentioned clean beauty, and I've been dying to ask you this question. In fact, I want to know the dirt on clean beauty, <laughs> because a lot of the times brands call a product clean and slap a huge price tag on it. And we jump and fist fight each other and grab everything off the shelf because we think that's what's best for us. But how well educated are we on the clean in clean beauty? I think it's important to demystify what the word clean means because it's so <laughs> highly unregulated. Yeah. Today, a customer has enough information and knowledge about ingredients to know that what you're picking up, if it says paraben free or sulfate free or silicone free, it's probably better for you than what you're picking up at a supermarket, which doesn't have these claims. And uh, clean beauty has misconceptions. A, it's not easily accessible. B, it's not uh, efficacious. Uh, C, it's expensive. And D, that it's not luxurious. So we're here to uh, denounce those, uh, if I may, because it is very possible, no matter how much you can afford, to pick something which is good for you. Just going back to the, the whole journey, going from breast cancer to, um, to clean beauty, was it, because one of the things I see with patients is, I think they would like to know, obviously you get over the shock at some point that you've had cancer, but then people like to know that I had cancer because I did. So people who have lung cancer say, because I smoked or whatever. Did you, did you go through that? I mean, why, why did you decide that this was something, the clean beauty was something that you, um, that you felt it was necessary from a breast point of view. Did you start looking at the back, the bottles of no. uh, things that you were using at the time? No, I was just asked to stop using things that as a young girl I could buy in the stores. And then I began my research on the ingredients because I was trying to find what would be good for me during the treatment. I had surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and for nine years I was on hormone treatment. Mm -hmm. And during that time, I was also going to leave for my INSEAD MBA and I knew I was going to travel to a different country and I had to take care of myself. So my journey of knowing uh, what's good to either ingest or to put topically mm -hmm. is 13 years old. At that point in time, no, I didn't tell myself that I got it because I'd smoked, because I didn't. <laughs> I didn't tell myself that, uh, what is the universe trying to teach me? Yes. I think that came later. Uh, but I just became very mindful of what I was eating and what my, what my purpose was in a way. I think when you're young, you feel invincible, you're addicted to the superficial, and uh, you're not highly attuned to yourself. Unboxed okay, Tom. Live on air. <laughs> Never unboxed live on air. But uh, we have 
one Anisha, of the boxes I'm a huge here. fan of some of your products and yes. Tom is carrying some of them so tell us about that one so the box actually is beautiful in itself because it's made locally recyclable material the company is called secret skin because it's the secret cells that we hide from the world and yet it's the purest and the strongest part of us so secret skin is all about going beyond the norms of beauty standards globally and then an acceptance of self so here we have uh, some brands on secret skin that have been very carefully responsibly curated from ayurveda to sustainable packaging to active ingredients in makeup these are products from different parts of the world that are only available on secret skin mm -hmm. and we spend a lot of time and effort on education and advocacy and ingredient transparency uh mm -hmm. in order to help build the voice of uh, clean beauty and sustainable living in this region Anisha I love this one sorry I'm That's my favorite actually <laughs> because That's it's your pink. shade oh, wow. it's my it's my shade and it's very fitting with the theme over here it's been an absolute Thank pleasure you. having you we wish you could stay longer but unfortunately we need to wind the segment up Thank keep you. doing everything you're doing keep inspiring everyone and of course i hope to see you around Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Next up, we went down to check out the Mobile Clinic touring around the UAE offering free breast cancer screening to women. This is of course the Pink Caravan. The Pink Caravan is a breast cancer awareness uh, uh, campaign uh, initiated in 2011 uh, by Friends of Cancer Patients. Uh, it's aimed to uh, raise awareness or for early detection for women and men. The Pink Caravan is located in 90 locations across the October month and uh, uh, around 1,000 uh, checkup, self-examination and mammogram uh, checkup have been done during uh, the month of October. From Friends of Cancer Patients we always encourage the ladies, the women, and men as well to do the self-examination on a regular basis. Uh, one, once a month is a must. Uh, ladies over 40, they have to do the mammogram on a, a regular basis. Ladies who are below 40, uh, we encourage them to do it every month, at least once a year with a, specific, a specialist doctor. But every month they have to check themselves for early, detect, uh, early detection and to prevent, them, prevent themselves from the cancer. We know that early detection of breast cancer is the, is the easiest way. It's, it's a almost 100% uh, chance for curing breast cancer. So that's the reason why Pink Caravan had been introduced and has become such a big movement across uh, UAE. One of the misconceptions is breast cancer is death penalty. No, it's not. It's a treatable disease where we can detect it and treat it also. And uh, the other uh, misconception is that um, every breast cancer is inheritory or hereditary, and it is not. It's 15% of breast cancers being hereditary. As a woman, it's it's must. The woman should take care about their health. Okay, so don't feel shy or anything. Don't think it's a disease. Okay, they should take some precautions. They should have basic knowledge about that woman's health. It's a um, very great initiative for gathering. When we are collaborating to make something for else, we are really very powerful and we are doing this for ourselves. This campaign is very important because we are raising awareness because it is increasing the survival rate by 93%. If you have checkups every, every year or every month, every six months, depending on the age of the, of the uh, person. It is very important for every lady to um, actually do the prevention and uh, to learn more about the uh, possible signs of having such uh, illness uh, or disease and uh, that's why it's um, actually advisable for every lady to, to try to attend uh, such events if possible. I strongly believe nutrition can be a treatment that can be used for prevention of various lifestyle diseases and in breast cancer our core focus is preventing recurrence, being in maintaining remission, reducing inflammation, ensuring strong immunity and having a good quality of life. And that can happen only when a wholesome approach is managed. Citizens all across the UAE inspiring us. Oh. 
ladies. Thank you so much for that. Now it is time for the roundup and we're continuing to delve into the subject of breast cancer. Ash, what is the buzz in town? I'm so glad you asked, Dina. Now for many years, brands and grocers have focused on breast cancer programs during October, often using the signature pastel pink color for signage packaging and other forms of communication. Pink washing is a term coined recently to describe a company or organization that claims to care about the breast cancer uh, community by promoting a pink ribbon product, but at the same time produces or sells products containing chemicals that are linked to the disease. So how do consumers avoid pink washing during Breast Cancer Awareness Month? I mean, how do we feel about the pink cupcakes, guys? Because <laughs> those pink cupcakes are everywhere. I'm like, do the proceeds, like, do the profits even go anywhere? Yeah. Like, what's happening with all the pink cupcakes everywhere? Well, hopefully you, the proceeds go somewhere. I mean, you would like to think, but, you know, it's not mentioned. What do you think, Dr. Harry? I think you're yeah, best answering I mean, this I think question. I think, yeah, I mean, a lot of times we have to stop and think, yes, it is, it is about brand promotion. Um, but, um, you know, the funds that are raised obviously go to a good cause sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Um, but, yes, I mean, I completely agree. Just in terms, I mean, I, I, I sort of get the point when you're using the term when it comes to profiteering uh, for a company as well, or certainly making funds on the back of. The, the only thing I would add to it as well is, is, again, going back to the idea of an awareness campaign just for one month as well, when it mm. should be for the entire year. It you know, should, and, yeah. and I'm not taking anything away from the beginning of October to the end being a real focus and roll the caravan out and let's all, let's all make sure that it's very much in everyone's um, consciousness. But then people need to realise it's not just for one month. There are 11 sure. more months in a year. Yes, but I think a lot of these companies only want to do it in October. I yeah. personally have tried to get campaigns going um, the rest, the other yeah, yeah. 11 months, and it doesn't necessarily, um, it doesn't excite anyone um, if they want to do it in October. But you can look at it also from the other way, that, you know, it's not just about breast cancer. Yeah. You know, women need to think about their health in general. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we try to put things in perspective, um, for every woman in this world, their risk of dying or dropping dead of a heart attack is way higher than getting breast cancer. Mm. But, you know, we don't have the same emotions that go into a heart attack. Mm. You know, we, we, nobody goes, oh, my God, my heart. But if you say anything about the breast, everybody gets, you know. Mm. So it is a very emotive subject. But what I try to tell people, um, again, to try and get away from that sort of fear or um, witch hunt about, you know, I've got to get it before it gets me, mm -hmm. is that it's a full body awareness. Um, women have to know about their body, and this, this is what Anisha was talking about. It's not just about breasts, it's about knowing your body, knowing when there's changes, um, and then doing something about it. Yeah. My gynecologist actually said something very interesting to me. She said that a lot of brands in the month of uh, October conveniently pinkify their packaging yes. because pink is a color, let's face it, that resonates a lot with women. Plus, it is a symbol of hope. But what she said is that breast cancer is not just a women's only problem. In rare cases, it is something that can affect men. And she said that the whole breast cancer awareness campaign shouldn't just be pink. It should be pink and blue. <laughs> right. We are uh, building that community, the breast cancer awareness special right here on DXB today. Still plenty to come. Let's see what's coming up. Mr. Dubai, Max Fardan joins us to share his journey surviving breast cancer. Plus, a much anticipated live performance from Alicia, uh, the resident singer from Dream Dubai. Stay with us.